the, the, the idea of building a, a, a central sport network is to help you collect testimonies, observe and monitor, but also to foster exchange of practices, mutual learning and cooperation uh, and, and in, in this field. So um, who uh, should take action? I mean, uh, this network is composed, as you all know, of different stakeholders. We have from local authorities to all type of sports clubs, federation, referees, uh, supporter groups, but also um, civil society organization working on anti-racism anti and anti-discrimination, uh, victim support centers, healthcare workers, and of course, uh, youth uh, representatives and volunteers, and of course, the uh, media. Uh, while, um, so how can we create a network of, of stakeholders that will help the, the center in having information and collecting uh, testimonies? While uh, there are many different types of partnerships, all partnerships, as we all know, are based on the belief that working together is more effective than working alone. Uh, the central partnership needs to take an inclusive approach in which all actors are involved in all stages uh, of, the, of the activities. And a strong commitment uh, from each of the partners of the network is reflected in the, in the fact that all partner organizations are equally presented and represented at all stages. Um, we, um, we need to engage with local communities, but how? I mean, local communities have a better knowledge uh, and understanding than, for instance, some local authorities, uh, and have generally more credibility when addressing issues of discrimination and uh, racism. So in order to build a strong partnership, the community as a whole needs to be involved and mobilized. Uh, maintaining a constant dialogue with the community will um, allow the right stakeholders to be mobilized, including youth representatives and civil society organizations. Um, in particular, and this is something that the central uh, sports projects want to stress, young people can play um, and already do play a leading role um, in promoting a society that is more tolerant and multicultural. That is why we need to engage them in these, uh, in, in these uh, activities. Um, community engagement can take the form of, of, of different uh, empowerment uh, activities and, and, and practices. And that is why um, before opening the floor to, to, to everyone and hearing from the associations and the cities who are presented today, we wanted to give you two examples that highlight the importance of uh, building a, a network and in, and in particular of the role of youth participation in promoting um, a society that is more tolerant and uh, multicultural. The uh, first example that some of you uh, have heard uh, of is a project led by the city of Luando. Luando is a small Italian city of just over, uh, I think, 11,000 uh, people who've been fighting to promote uh, the inclusion of people with uh, disabilities and making uh, sports facilities more accessible to all. Uh, the project, as, as our project, aims to train sports coaches on the prevention, uh, uh, in this case, of, of, of people with disabilities. Uh, but how? By building a network of partners, local partners and regional partners that will work together to promote social inclusion and the prevention of discrimination um, in sport. So together, they've managed to implement different projects, making sport accessible uh, to all. Um, uh, we can give you more information about this uh, project uh, by email if you, if you want. Uh, a second example that I wanted to uh, highlight is uh, on the role of youth participation. Under the slogan uh, of Football for Everyone, that you can see on the corner of the, of the, of the screen, uh, the association, an association called uh, the Hijab, Hijabers, which is a group of young hijab-wearing uh, soccer players from different teams, 
who have uh, joined forces to campaign against what they believe and describe as a discriminatory rule that excludes uh, Muslim women uh, from participating in sports. Um, they are working together to solve a paradox, which is that although the FIFA, which is the world soccer's uh, governing body, allows sport women to play in hijab, the French soccer federation doesn't allow it, arguing that it will break with the principle of religious neutrality on the field. Uh, but without wanting to, to enter a political and heated debate, we just want to highlight here the role of the youth, which are coming together, mobilizing their own uh, local network composed of community uh, organizers, uh, victim support centers, uh, but also researchers and universities, and, fi and fighting on what they describe uh, as a discriminatory uh, rule against uh, Muslim women. So uh, these two examples show uh, two different uh, types of discrimination, uh, two different types of projects to fight discrimination, but uh, at its core, the idea that without mobilizing a network and creating a partnership, uh, we cannot fight and prevent discrimination um, in sports. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's my short presentation on, on partnerships and network because now we would like to hear from you, associations and, and cities, because I know we have a very interesting associations working on racism, but also I see my colleagues from Liege who are very active in the, in the, in the sport, in, in, in preventing racism uh, in sports. Um, so I'm opening the floor if anyone wants to explain uh, their activities and how they manage to involve uh, local communities in the fight of discrimination, against discrimination. Thank you.